He who is to come will come and will not delay. And now there will be no fear within our land, for he is our Saviour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear friends, the Lord is near. The Lord approaches us in humility, not in anger, not in wrath, but as a lowly child in a manger. We prepare our hearts to worship the King of Kings who comes by acknowledging our need for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Judges. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a man of Zorah of the tribe of Dan called Manoah. His wife was barren. She had borne no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to this woman and said to her, You are barren and have had no child, but from now on take great care. Take no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for you will conceive and bear a son. No razor is to touch his head, for the boy shall be God's Nazareth, from his mother's womb. It is he who will begin to rescue Israel from the power of the Philistines. Then the woman went and told her husband, a man of God has just come to me. His presence was like the presence of the angel of God. He was so majestic. I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not reveal his name to me. But he said to me, you will conceive and bear a son. From now on, take no wine or strong, or, or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For well, the boy shall be God's Nazareth from his mother's womb to this dying day. The woman gave birth to a son and called him Samson. The child grew and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the Lord began to move him. The word of the Lord. Fill me with your praise and I will sing your glory. Be a, be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. Fill me. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. Fill me with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will declare the Lord's mighty deeds, proclaiming your justice, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonders still. Fill me with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Come, flower of Jesse's stem, sign of God's love for all his people. Save us without delay. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there lived a priest called Zechariah who belonged to the Abijah section of the priesthood. And he had a wife, Elizabeth by name, who was a descendant of Aaron. Both were worthy in the sight of God and scrupulously observed all the commandments and observances of the Lord. But they were childless. Elizabeth was barren and they were both getting on in years. Now it was the turn of Zechariah's section to serve and he was exercising his priestly office before God when it fell to him by lot, as the ritual custom was, to enter the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense there. And at the hour of incense, the whole congregation was outside praying. Then there appeared to him the angel of the Lord, standing on the right of the altar of incense. The sight disturbed Zechariah, and he was overcome with fear. But the angel said to him, Zechariah, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth is to bear you a son and you must name him John. He will be your joy and delight and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must drink no wine, no strong drink. Even from his mother's womb he will be filled with the Holy Spirit and he will bring back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah he will go before him to turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and the disobedient back to the wisdom that the virtuous have, preparing for the Lord a people fit for him. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stand in God's presence, and I have been sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. Listen, since you have not believed my words, which will come true at their appointed time, you will be silenced and have no power of speech until this has happened. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were surprised that he stayed in the sanctuary so long. When he came out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had received a vision in the sanctuary. But he could only make signs to them and remained dumb. When his time of service came to an end, he returned home. Some time later, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept it to herself. The Lord has done this for me, she said, now that it has pleased him to take away the humiliation I suffered among men. The Gospel of the Lord. We have this beautiful annunciation not the Annunciation we're most familiar with. But did you notice we have two Annunciations today in the readings? Samson's mother, Manoah's wife, who remains nameless to us. She too receives this message from the angel of the Lord that she will conceive and bear a child and he will be great. Sarah, Abraham's wife, Rebecca, Hannah, all of these great women in the Old Testament received the same message from the Lord that they will conceive. And so St. Luke, the evangelist, masterfully composes his gospel, telling us that John the Baptist is in the same line of God's saving work, that God will bring about this child through Elizabeth, Mary's kinswoman. But there are some differences between all these annunciations and the annunciation that we know of. The one which we will contemplate on Sunday, this Sunday's Gospel, where the angel Gabriel visits Mary, the Virgin of Nazareth. Mary, unlike all these women of old, and Elizabeth as well, Mary, unlike them, is not on, she's not advanced in years, she is not barren as it were, she is young. Mary, unlike Elizabeth, unlike, rather, unlike Zechariah, who receives this vision from Gabriel, Mary doesn't exactly 
put the Lord to the test, doesn't ask for a sign. Mary's a contemplative. She asks, how can this be that I am to be the mother of so great a king? Yet she doesn't ask for that sign, and so she doesn't, she isn't, of course, made dumb as Zechariah, John the Baptist's father. Mary always shows us how to receive God, how to receive his word, how to receive his very presence in sacrament. Mary doesn't ask for proof. Mary has this great gift of faith, and I believe that she wishes to share that gift of faith with us. So we ask her this day to give us a fresh gift of faith, a renewed sense of faith that the Lord is here, that the Lord comes to us, most especially in the sacraments of his church, but also in any way he wishes to. Let us open up this Christmas to the wonder of God's love that comes to us. And the only thing that stops his love coming to us is our sin, our rejection of that love. Holy Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. As we await with longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, let us with renewed devotion beseech his mercy, that as he came into the world to bring the good news to the poor and heal the contrite of heart, so in our own time also he may bring salvation to all in need. That even in the midst of uncertainties, we may continue to trust in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like Zechariah and Elizabeth, may parents welcome children with love and responsibility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be many young people who will generously respond to the call to the priestly and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may heal the sick and bring comfort to the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that our departed ones may be welcomed into the joy of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers. We ask O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring despite our weakness may be sanctified by your power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in, in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The dawn from on high will visit us, guiding our feet into the way of peace. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arousing us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Saviour and honour it with minds made pure. Through Christ our Lord. 
We hope to see you here on um, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Our mass times are Christmas Eve, 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. and midnight mass with carols at 11.30. On Christmas Day, we have mass at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. So you're most welcome to register for those masses through our Tri Booking site. You can either search on Tri Booking for us, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Melbourne, or go through the diocesan website. If we don't see you, have a blessed Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.